Hello and good morning, everybody. Good to see you. No audio there? That is the strangest thing. Ah, hopefully I didn't grab the wrong video, but hey, I have audio. Uh, and just confirm by giving me a thumbs up in chat. Good to see you, Cody Bear, uh, Eve, Andreas, uh, Clarissa. I think I have, must have two videos that uh, one of them does not have audio, I guess. So anyways, um, audio and video, good, fantastic. All right, cool. Can you guys should be able to hear me? So just confirm with me that you can. That'd be great. Seems like we're good to go. Um, uh, Cody is my video player muted. I don't know. I will check later. I'm just glad you guys are here. Uh, Paul Trading going to dive into um, what we have going on today, which is creating some type lockups, basically. So um yeah sort of leveling up your typographic layouts so i've been covering type lately just because it is the um, number one tool being used in uh, like illustrator illustrator on ipad and in most tools it's the number one tool that's uh, being used so uh we could talk about fonts but i want to create some wonderful type lockups and that's the plan so uh this should be good and uh hello if you're joining me elsewhere Hello, everyone out there. Cool. Fantastic. All right. Speaking of the word fantastic, let's get this party started. I would actually was going to start out uh, in Illustrator on the iPad. So if that works for you, that's what I'd love to do. All right. So um, let's go ahead and uh, get this party started. Because again, I haven't been on Illustrator on the iPad for a little bit, but uh, I'm glad you guys are here to uh, kind of check it out and see what we could do. Because uh, literally, I've been working on this lately uh, just for fun. So yes, like Bliss says, happy Friday, y'all. Uh, right in here. So again, just jumping in. You guys get how this works. Let me just give myself some room on my desktop as I work live. And uh, yeah. You are fan, Tim, you are fantastic, my friend. Uh, so I just typed in some text there, just scaling using that touch modifier, right? As you can see, boom, boom, open up your properties. And this is what you get. And this is actually what I like, because I actually, yes, let's go with that, Tim. Why not? Uh, fan, let's do all caps, fan, fantastic. Fantastic, everybody. Absolutely love this font. Come in here, let's duplicate it. Let's bring it down here. Dive into the different fonts. I'm actually just dealing with a geometric font um, and uh, I think it'd be fun to play with, so um, cool. How do I like my bike? I love my bike, Michelle. I love it. So I guess I'm repping the brand for whatever reason. Uh, I love these thin line or hairline fonts, as you can see right here, uh, that we could kind of take, and I really like just these geometric ones, but if you take a look, and ooh, this one's nice too, so let's keep this one around, right, again, duplicating that, bring that down, we're going to create some a type lockup with this, so we're going to fit it within 1080 by 1350, and then I have like four other projects here, so we're going to do a lot with type today, and it should be a lot of fun. So again, there we are, I'm dealing with just geometric right? Hairline fonts are really classy and they give you like a lot of versatility, especially in Illustrator because we can sort of stroke it. We can draw over that line. We can just do lots of things with it since it's so geometric, which is awfully nice. Clean is also another area that you can look at. It's very similar to uh, obviously geometric clean. Uh, but I think so, for something fantastic would also be something like very exciting. So we could think, okay, would be an exciting text, right? Um, I would think something like, uh, not calligraphic, but uh, maybe cursive. And yeah, let's go into rough actually. <laughs> Again, I'm just kind of playing around with this, just kind of picking and showing you really ultimately all these lovely fonts. As we scroll down, geez, look at how many rough fonts there are. Holy moly. Some work better in all caps than others. But look at all those. 
Down there at the bottom, you can see sort of getting more uh, fonts from the Creative Cloud mobile app. So you get the idea. Your hairline font, that is, is so thin. All right. Cool, so we have some fonts here, right? Just kind of showing you some of them. And uh, let's just take one of these. Let's just copy it. And instead of just duplicating, that's what I've been doing, is duplicating this font. Off to the side, we can go ahead and we can cut. We can copy it like I'm doing now. I'm copying it to the clipboard, like turning off that layer, adding a new layer, and then pasting. So now we have this font to work with. I can also hold down the shift key if you happen to have a keyboard, jump in and uh, start to work with this. And let's check the size. Um, I ultimately want, uh, let's zoom out a little bit. Go right over here with, we're gonna do 1080 by 1350, like that. Instagram size. Now we're gonna play with this site. So yeah, guess what? First thing I'm gonna do, I always keep a backup of my font and my text. So uh, I'll just jump in here. You can see right over here, we can go ahead and outline that text. So that's what I'm gonna do right now. Let's outline it, bam, right? Let's take it, let's ungroup it. So clicking these little options in here, um, again, for each one of these letters. So if it is grouped, you could hit the, I wish I could zoom in on that, the ungroup button is the short of it. All right, let's just have some fun. Boom, boom. Tass. Tick. Right, we're gonna make this fun, right? We're gonna do a fun type lockup, uh, but we're gonna always make sure that this is legible, right? And that's This is gonna be pretty easy since I'm only dealing with one word, but I have more complex examples set up. Uh, Uh, that's funny, Sean. I thought you were gonna make a bald, bald joke, uh, Sean. So, and I thought it was hilarious. Uh, I see you over there, Mashab. Good to have you here, man. Uh, so let's take this. We're gonna start to extend some of these, and uh, just see what happens. I guess, huh? Right. So again, this is kind of boring. It's stacked, right? I already broke it apart, so I could take some of these points pull them down like so, right? So that's what we're gonna do with a couple of these. Um, we're gonna take, actually, let's move this off to the side. Let's take this S, right? This S is pretty cool, but really I wanna delete some of these points. Let's delete them, bam, oh, not the whole thing. Um, oh, right in here, again, with selecting these points, right down here, trash, hit the trash can, don't hit the delete on your keyboard. Okay, so that's what I'm doing. Let's take that, let's replace that with a big circle. So this will be fun. Zoop, there's our big circle. Let me make sure that's constrained. It looks like this shift key on the keyboard does not quite do its do the magic, but you can see that diagonal line says, hey, you know what? Let's actually hold down this, um, my touch modifier. That will give me my perfect circle. Flip it. How's everybody doing today, huh? Is everybody having a beautiful day? I hope so. I hope you are. Let's do something like that, huh? How about it? Right, do we want it that thick? Do we need it a touch thinner? Hey, we could work on that. No big deal. All right, so using the pen tool, we'll zoom in here and we'll say, hey, you know what? Let's add a point right there. Uh, off to the side, uh, let's add a point like right there, right? And then I can just use my uh, direct selection tool. Ugh, I always do that. And then delete. So this is kind of what I want. All right. Bobby's or Bobby Orlando is not doing too bad. Uh, I'm doing all right, man. I'm doing, I'm doing actually okay. I pulled a muscle in my calf and I haven't been able to work out all week. And it's just killing me that I can't do what I love to do. Darn it. So it's just been really frustrating for me personally. So hopefully you're having a better week than I am. You know, always when you get hurt, just makes you appreciate um, when you're healthy. 
We'll take this down to seven. Let's just type in seven. So hopefully everybody else is happy and healthy. All that good stuff. Oh yeah. Yeah, it sucks. My friggin' calf killing me. The good news is, is I'm winning both my squash and my racquetball. I'm in two leagues and I'm and I'm I'm winning in both of them. But that's how I hurt myself. Is uh, playing racquetball and then not stopping and then going and playing squash and then winning my game. So I'm just bragging now, but I'm pretty proud that I was able to, you know, beat my opponents. So is that wrong? I don't think so. Taking these three. Sometimes the shift key works, um, but I know the touch modifier does just to scale that down. Ah, I kind of don't want to do that. I'm kind of torn on that. I'm torn on this part right here. But this is currently my sort of type lockup. Taking these, having some fun, just stretching them out, right? Um, and uh, making something unique. It's like, how much can we distort this type or get away with distorting it? Um, uh, while still keeping it legible. That's the goal. Uh, yeah, you don't know how much you use something till you hurt it. Oh man, like if you ever hurt your back, you're like, wow, <laughs> this is horrible. <laughs> your back's probably the worst, because then you're like, geez, I use my back all the time, and yet, why am I always ignoring it? Okay, so... I think I'm gonna have to take this down a touch. So I'm just limping around like a sad, sad man. Uh, what else does this need, right? Again, just grabbing some of these. As I pull down this T, notice how uh, I'm gonna get these guidelines and it will tell me um, when it's perfectly vertical or horizontal. So, so that's a little, and again, we're just having fun with this guys. Again, I just, I just need to have a fun day and, um, I don't know. Hopefully you guys are having a good day as well, right? Let's again, creating that type lock up, pulling this down, making sure that I don't even know what DX means or DY. I just think of it X and Y, right? So I'm pulling down based on the X, making sure that's set at zero. All right, let's take this part up like so. Make sure the X stays at zero. It snaps into place usually. And uh, that's a good start for what we have going on. Let's shrink this down just like so. And uh, yeah, call it a day. Let's just go ahead and close that, right? That'll give us a good starting point. I'm gonna switch over to my desktop now, okay? Uh, Mashab, is Adobe Dimension 3D modeling software? The answer, the answer is yes. Adobe Dimension is, well, so I take that back. Yes, it is, but um, you are kind of limited when it comes to uh, the modeling aspect. It's more for compositing. It is the same way Photoshop's used for compositing photos um, is the same way Dimension enables you to sort of like composite uh, 3D objects together and make new fantastic scenes and light them and add textures and all that fun stuff. There's also Substance 3D Stager, which does something very similar. All right, we're gonna go ahead and switch over to my desktop and you can see Magically, here we are, Pop. a little larger, right? Let's move me over and um, let's just go full screen with this, shall we? Again, all these other ideas, what I was working on, right? Concrete jungle, this would be really fun to work with. I like these, um, I'm blessed with uh, being able to choose the phrases, so I know real life is much harder. Um, but here we go, Concrete Jungle. Let's open up the file we were working on. File, open. And we'll go right in here. That's just an untitled document, right? I could always rename it, but let's check it out. Um, skulls, flowers, butterflies, definitely, yes. 
Oh yeah, you're right, Norsh. That's totally all that's on my iPad. Jeez, freaking find find some new content, Paul. Jeez. Ah, find some new content. Shift Command H. Bam, there it is. Command Zero. We can see on my desktop, and let's get this party started. So let me know how you guys are doing. We got a full day of fun activities. Um, I, I don't know. I think it's really fun for us evangelists because we are talking about uh, we're doing our master classes. So it's a lot. Of, it's a lot of fun. All right. So here we have this, and um, there's a couple different ways I could approach this now. Um, you know, I'm I I I tend to. So this is the problem. Command Y. Bam. This is the problem. Look at this. This is a typical font scenario, right? Guess what? There's two lines here. Guess what? I only need one, right? How do we sort of rectify that uh, situation, right? Uh, well, we'll see if we have to, by the way. Because um, uh, even when I shrunk this down, remember I shrunk this down, you could see it's actually touch thinner and it's going to drive me nuts. Um, so let's, I kind of want to add a mister to this as well. Can we do that? Do we remember the font name? Oh yeah, that's why I keep a backup. All right. Mr. or Mrs. Right, so again, this is, uh, this is kind of the issue. Right, if I decide to have Mr. Fantastic or Mrs. Fantastic. Right, that's just going to be a different thickness. How about some butterfly skulls? You know I've made a butterfly skull before. Okay, so let's do this dance, people. Let's do this dance called graphic design. Let's take all this. Let's actually do this, selecting this going up to select, same, fill color. There, actually, no, I take that back. I'm gonna select everything, and then we're just gonna take down the opacity like so. And I'm gonna rush through this, because you guys demand to be entertained, and uh, I plan on doing my best. No, I plan on excelling at that, huh? Why not? Bam, bam, bam. Right, there it is, flip it. Escape, right? Shaba. It's pretty easy now, right? Now that we have that font, I've modified it. Uh, I'm gonna go with a line so then I can adjust the thickness and it's gonna give me a lot more flexibility. Just hitting the escape key. All right, uh, Mashab, you are welcome. And uh, good to have you here, Mashab. Thanks for joining me. I see you out there on YouTube. I'm also looking at uh, the um, uh, good old Behance chat, just so you know. Boom, boom, escape. We're rushing through this as fast as possible. All right, talk amongst yourselves. What else is going on? Hey, thinking about going to see, uh, uh, what is it? Jungle Cruise tonight. Good idea or bad idea? Let me know. All right, let's grab an ellipse. Has anybody seen Jungle Cruise? And am I wasting my time? That's the big question. All right, for this, yeah, let's just let's just jump in and cut it. So cut, cut using the scissors. Typically, when you do that, you got to come in and you got to hit delete. You should have to hit delete twice. There's actually a secret little should have these little. Sometimes you have these. Uh, um, residual points that are not attached to a line when you start using the um, scissors tool. So just kind of keep that in mind. 
I already did this line. We'll go up here. This is going to be the hardest part. It's not going to be that difficult, though. Holding down the shift key because I'm going to put it directly on each sort of side, if you will. Done. Let's clean it up, Paul. Clean it up. Ooh, look at how off that was. Okay, Command J. What's Command J? Join. Right, right up here. Object. Path. Join. Now this is all one path, and we can see how wonky this is. You usually have to jump in and delete one of that points. Hit the minus key. Bam, there we are. Shift C, right? We get uh, this ability to adjust the uh, sort of control points, the anchor points, if you will, right? To kind of smooth that out, right? Trying to get that in the center. It's like I'm playing the um, Bezier game right now. Steady, steady, Paul. Okay, you ready for this? Let's remove this point, as few points as possible. Let's see if I, uh, if that was a good decision. Let's get that nice curve. Oh, nailed it. Bam, there we are. We have our lines. We're good to go. Ah. <sighs> Cool. Jungle Cruise. It's a Disney movie based off the... Di yeah, the ride. You're right. Oh, Norse. Where, where do you live, Norse? Like, I want to know your exact location. Just kidding. But, um, yeah. Just kind of curious if it's a good idea. You know what is going to be a good movie? It's Green Knight. I'll tell you that right now. If you're into that sort of thing. Okay, so now that I have all this squared away, I have the flexibility of these being lines and I have just like a lot more control now so I can jump this up to 20 right finally I can see it right I might I want to be concerned for little spots like this it's that whole saying like tight but not touching you can have things tight but don't have it touching because this is going to create just too much tension it's like you want you want to connect it like your brain wants to connect it and you can't let your brain connect it Right, you gotta kind of scoot this over or do something with it. Right, so that's all I'm doing. It's like moving this over a little bit and maybe taking all of this and this and starting to see these, um, you know, these sort of um, lines that are being connected, right? This vertical line right here going all the way down, right? That's a thing. Okay, so let's kind of play with some colors now. Um, uh, let's see, at the intersection of first and first, uh, okay, yeah, okay, I do not know what that, I read the wrong comment at this point, I've got to catch up with ya. Uh, some, okay, Norris lives, uh, near some banana trees. Muriel, thanks for joining me too. Alright, so you guys, what do you guys think of this? Uh, want to know your advice, like what would you do next, right? It's kind of a curious thing to talk about, right? Just using presentation mode, which is shift F, right? I'll get rid of everything off to the sides. And I think if it's going to be the words fantastic, like it needs to be colorful. Like I almost want to um, stroke it with multiple colors or have some banding of colors, right? I'm going to try a number of things, but basically I'm going to be introducing colors at this point. By the way, not to say that I, I need to kind of click through my other projects that we have going on too. So this is what you have looking forward to, right? So we have this concrete jungle that I'm going to work on, right? So for this, I would jump in. I would use, I absolutely love climate crisis. It's a variable uh, width font, but I just like love, oh, love how it looks. Like, look at that. Look at how cool that is. It's just a cool, big, fat font. Everything is packed in tight, just like a city, right? There's no room. You're just going down these streets, but it'd be really fun to make these look like streets, right? So that's a great idea for this one. Uh, we'll move on, think outside the box, right? I have some ideas there. Uh, off the grid was another one I was working on. And actually, let me just kind of click. I can, 
show you some of that. Life's full of blank, right? We have a couple other ideas and then like a level up, which I can't stand this. So please don't look at it. Back to our fun design. Fantastic. Quite literally. You know how much I say this word? I don't know. That might be why I, um, why I uh, decided to use this. So let's try some basic things. Oh, I have some more things in here in this whole file I'm so excited about. Jordan Sanborn likes Dimension. And Jordan, since you guys did bring up Dimension, I would say that um, I would use, again, just picking a color, for say, think outside the box, I would actually use Dimension for this project. Because this is what I was thinking with this, take this type, extrude it, make it 3D, make them all look like boxes, or make it look like they're plastered on boxes, but like breaking out of them. So that's more of a complex concept, but that's what I would do here is use dimension for this project. And really the goal is to use, you know, the best tool for the job. Okay, let's have some fun, huh? We have this the way we want it. We have our text. This is still a little tight. And again, we can kind of cheat that in a little bit. Cause like I said, we want it tight, but not touching, right? We want everything to have the same amount of space. So again, these are the gritty, nitty gritty details that we need to be concerned with right here. Boom, boom. Does that have roughly the same spaces between these two letters, between this, between that, you know, like everything has to like just fit together nice and neat. All right. So that's the goal. All righty. Uh, you, oh, you were liking level up. Maybe it's the background that doesn't allow it to be as great. Here's the problem with level up. Let me see if I could do this really fast and uh, I might not be able to. Okay, so this is, this is, I can't do anything with it. But what I would do is I would simplify this down to maybe only four colors. And I would, I, I'm interested more in the banding. What this looks like here, this, these gradients, this is the problem in my opinion. This makes it look like it's 80s, like or like 90s, right? This is like synth wave type stuff. You know, this is not, not cool in my opinion. It's like not modern. It's just not good. <laughs> I would end up doing something like this. If you guys don't mind, I'm gonna jump out. Hello, Mr. Uh, Instagram. I would give it this sort of look. So let me just jump out here. Kind of like what's happening here. See this? Like that. See how it's just flat color? That's what needs to happen with that. So anyways, that's all. Moving on to our project that we've uh, been working on. Let's make it colorful and fun. Let's cheat some of this. Like I said, I wanted that spacing to be kind of the same, like around all these different letters. So right in here, keep them kind of the same if I can. The great thing is this is a line, so I could just kind of tweak that out there like so, right? Uh, this one, I feel like if I pull this down too much, it, yeah, it still reads. Yeah, still might be okay. All right. Oh, oh, thank you for saying that, Matt Benson. Dimension is still in the show older apps um, uh, option. So, uh, yeah. There's also a 3D stager. All right, let's have some fun with this. Jeez, Paul, stop talking. Let's do, let's do this. Let me show you this really fast. I think this is pretty cool. Let's take this. Let's just say, for instance, oh, good Lord, I don't have any of my colors. Dang it. It's a file, new. That's right, I'm lazy, everything customized. I have my own startup file that I use because it has all these glorious gradients in it. So this is what I want, right? All these glorious gradients. Come in here. Let's 
do this really fast. Bam. Shabam. 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 And let's get a fun rainbow one. And then we will do, ooh, that one's nice. And this one. Okay, there we go. All of our lovely gradients. I'll have to tell you later how to make a startup file that has all your stuff in it, because it's like the best thing. Okay, coming in here, we'll paste these in. As I paste them in, right, if you're using them in another file, guess what, they're gonna appear right in here. Cool, good job. Let's take some of these. Let's take this one, maybe, um, or this one. I don't know which one. I mean, I'm, I'm doing this for the first time. And so I'm gonna go through this, and I'm gonna just tell you exactly why uh, I would do this. So we're gonna go to rasterize. Okay, we're gonna rasterize this. Sure, 300 DPI, boom. Uh, then we're gonna go to image trace, right? So now it's a bitmap, and since it's a bitmap, we can trace it. So we can say, hey, turn this into just six colors, right? Doing it, bam, there is uh, a gradient that was turned into a bitmap that has been image traced. And now I have all these lovely color blocks. Don't forget to expand it, right? And now what I can do with this is I can turn it into a brush because drop it in here. We can make this an art brush or a pattern brush. Um, gosh, let's try a pattern brush, shall we? So this is what we get when we get a pattern brush. Shabo, there we are. It's gonna start to create this pattern, right? Um, and whether you want that or not, it's totally up to you. Click OK. There it is. Let's drop it in again. We'll change this to an art brush. Clicking OK. And what the art brush is going to do is it's going to stretch those colors along that line. OK. Click OK. So we have our art brush. We have our pattern brush. But watch this. Let's just take a gradient and drop it in here and try to turn it into an art brush. What's going to happen? It says, hey, the selected artwork contains an element that cannot be used in an art brush. The reason I uh, rasterized it and image traced it is so I can take those um, colors and turn the gradient and turn them into solid colors. Okay. Yada, yada, yada. So. Yeah, just like I was doing before. Yeah, let's just go ahead and take this now. Let's apply it to the strokes. Let's do it. Move that off to the side. Uh, 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 uh. Bam, shablam, shablamo, and shava. There we are. Hello, lines. Double clicking on this, saying, hey, this is awfully thick. Let's take this down 50%, previewing it. That's more like it. Heck, take it down 25%. There we are, boom. Uh, apply to strokes. There we go. We have our fun, fantastic colors, right? Right, you get the idea. Um, from here, I would actually change like the background color to something else that's not too loud. Right, it's maybe something kind of like that, right? So again, just playing with these colors. Um, I would probably, uh, you know, either have the colors, have all the, um, the stroke be just like all warm colors. And then in the background, I can have cool colors, right? So let's just add in another one, shall we? Should we try this one or this one? I don't know. I don't know, guys. I just work here. Let's rasterize it. Boom. Shaba. Bam. Make it happen. Expand it. Drag it in here. Make it an art brush. Take it down 25%. Right? And now we have this one. So, yeah. Let's, Let's take this. Apply this. That's also, again, another option. Yeah, right. Um, okay. <laughs> so again, this is where we get some of these, some of these parts of these letters are getting lost against that blue background. I definitely want like a blue or teal background. 
Um, but I want uh, just some fun colors. Ooh, this is the strip that I want. This one right here. That's the one. That's the one. Let me know how you guys are doing out there. Jordan, Muriel, Mashab, Biola, Rever Reverb Mike. There we are, Shabam. Uh, what would Paul do? Like, I'm honestly just like making it up as I go along. But you know what? You like end up knowing enough about these, the software, just like a lot of people here do. I get a lot of you already know what's up. Um, and then once you have all these tools in your toolbox, you can just kind of, you know, the big thing here is like, I, hopefully you guys sort of understand how Illustrator works, Illustrator on iPad, and how to make some of these design decisions, right? And this is, we're into the design decision phase. I will keep a couple of these so you can see my layers kind of stacking up. Hello, forgot to take this down to 25%. Apply to strokes. Uh, 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 uh. All right. Uh, what did I even do here? Oh, that's a pattern brush. That's what I did. See how, see how all those, how crazy those colors are? I'm not crazy. Did I pick the right one? I picked the wrong one. That's why. There it is. Cool. Done. This is what I want. Fantastic. Hey, we could stack these up. I know you're going to ask, Bliss. You're like, oh, could we add more? Heck yeah. Right in here. Appearance panel. Let's add another stroke. Shove it up. For this stroke, let's have it selected and then click on um, another brush. Now we will make this stroke a little thicker, right? We'll bring it beneath the current stroke and the current fill apparently. But see what I just did there? I just stacked it up, right? I'm starting to lose, I don't know, does it still read? I don't know if it still reads as uh, fantastic, but that's okay. 0.75, we can make this a little thinner and make this stroke down to say one. Did I do it? Oh, make sure you have the object selected. 0.75, right, made it a little thinner. Let's make this one a little thinner. Uh, uh. There we go. That's what I'm talking about. We're getting there, people. We're getting there. All right, look at that. So, again, this this is sort of, this is what we want, right? And parts I need to clean up, like right here, but I love this little border. Look at how elegant this makes it, right? I could easily sort of start to add some, I would love to add some shadows, some like a little bit of depth. And uh, that's what I think I'm gonna do next. Does that sound fun? You guys having fun? I hope so. All right, let's do some cleanup. Uh, I think we have Terry White up uh, after this. We have also a uh, Photoshop uh, daily creative challenge as well. Um, and then myself again, and then the Jason Levin or Levine. Uh, is up and uh, I will be on vacation next Friday. So uh, get your requests in now what you want to see um, next week. But I'm excited about my Photoshop masterclass because it's going to be all the pro tips that since we have so many pros here, I'm like, yeah, let's go deep. Let's, let's talk to the pros. Okay, so right in here, check this out. Have this situation. I want to reverse these colors, right? So let's make sure we have that correct stroke selected and then we'll go to object and path and then right in here we'll reverse this path direction uh, what happens if you join the strokes on the t i actually cannot join the strokes on the t see there it is it connects i can nudge that in a little bit and that just looks a little better again this is going to go on instagram so i don't need to make it too tight maybe in a touch more but um yeah, just because there's there's two crossbars, we can we can fix that. We can have it go from here to here and then down, and then we'd have to have an extra little bar kind of come out this way. 
So, oh, you do I? Can I go on vacation, please? My 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 real bosses. Okay, so that looks pretty good. Um, just kind of double checking it right in here. Yeah, this spot need to work on it. We need to be aware of what's on top of what. And let's take this. Let's put that on top. No, that doesn't look good. We're putting it back. I think we're good, guys. Um, I think it's just going to be easiest to take this into Photoshop, shall we? Let's take this. Let's launch Photoshop. And move on to our third app. Uh, I got 20 minutes, so this is good. Well, about 15 minutes. Um... Just scooch it over a bit. I love it. Um, create new. We're going to do Instagram times two. Let's do that. Click create. I usually do things at twice the size. Let's paste it in as a smart object. We'll click OK. All right. It'll paste it in at 100%. I want it twice the size. Yeah. This is all. You guys know what's up. I wonder why it pasted it in at 100%. 100.1%, that's interesting. We'll just type 200 in there, and now we have it to the size we want. Again, I just, I usually work at like double the size. Uh, 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 uh. Swatches, baby. Damn. Right? Um, and guess what? Ultimately, I'll probably make that a gradient. Right? Because it's going to be just cooler as a gradient. All right, let's uh, let's give this a nice drop shadow, and I could also do this in uh, Illustrator, but still in Photoshop, I'm going to have more flexibility. So this is lame, by the way. It's kind of lame. Look at how lame that is. I'm not a huge fan of like having this consistent shadow. I just I don't know if I find that that interesting. Is that wrong? Definitely take it down a bit. You know, I will judge you on your drop shadows, that's for sure. See, look at that. All we're doing is we're giving it a little bit of a lift, just like so. Click OK. Bam. Now we're going to do create a new layer. We're going to clip this layer to the layer below. And then we're going to take a brush and we're going to paint. There it is. This is where we get to add some highlights. Uh, just adding some lovely little highlights, okay? So I'm using my little, my Bob Ross voice as we kind of dive into this. It's just some lovely little, lovely little highlights there and there, right? We can press a little harder. I'm just using this Wacom, right? Bam, just like that right along this edge, right? Doesn't look that great, but we will jump in and we will change this to say, uh, I don't know. I was hoping this would come out a little bit better. But I, w I just want like some soft um, highlights on this. Overlay would do it if I wasn't so heavy handed with my brushes. So let's go with overlay and then let's just take down the opacity a little bit maybe. Hopefully that doesn't wash it out too much. Some happy little highlights, that's right. Let's crank this up a little bit more so we can just like see it. And uh, honestly, that's what I should have done first off is, um, you know, uh, I changed the blend mode. Anyways, let's just get this going here. Yeah, it's really hard to see. And it's getting a little sloppy, but that's okay. All right, so that does, you know, it gives it a little bit of a pop, huh? Um, new layer. And this is gonna be, so we have our highlights and our shads, shadows, which are gonna be black. See how black that is? So dark. Do 
let's change the blend mode. Change that to like overlay. Yeah, it's doing okay. It's, it's doing, it's doing all right. Anyways, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what you guys think. Uh, questions, concerns, irrational fears. Um, let me know what you guys think. Is this helping it at all? Is it too much? You know, just giving it drop shadows does not make it cooler necessarily. But uh, there we have it. I would call this, I guess, almost done. You guys ever do this? Crank up that brush size. Just put a little bit, a little bit, a little bit, a little bit. A little vignetting. There we go. All right, we're done with this. All right. Uh, yeah, so you're right. The gradient makes it look shiny as if it's made from jewels. Um, and I don't know if I, I really, I wanted it, I wanted to take it to the next level, but just turning something into like jewels, I don't know if that, it's supposed to be like fantastic. I guess it kind of works. It's supposed to be like, bam, a pop of color, right? So that's the idea. Uh, let's save this in here. And uh, from there, yeah, if, if, if we want to make it look even more like jewels, let's do this really fast. Come on in. Welcome, everyone. Good to have you here. Wonderful having you here. And uh, yeah, we got uh, about 10 more minutes. Let's jump in here. We'll do a render. You guys know what I'm doing. Black layer, lens flare. There it is. Just click OK change this to uh, any one of these within this third section is going to remove all the black. So uh, lighten looks good. Command D, turn that into a smart object. So we retain all the retain all the um, the resolution. And then we can just like do like that. There we go. Just a little command J, a little little sparkle, some little highlights. And we can always adjust the size for. Cool. Cool. Done. Is that good? Too much? Okay. Peter says it's too much. Ah, <sighs> says it's too much. I ruined it. I don't know. I don't know, guys. It reminds me when I got when I was really into airbrush in, in college. This looks like the type of thing that I would airbrush in college. So anyway, there it is. Uh, cool thing is what I would do from here, just so you know, just to kind of complete this whole step is I would and maybe you can't see it. Um, but right up here, this little button. This is how I end up transferring it to save my phone or anywhere else. So uh, airdrop, bam, all your connected devices, too many of them, but I can now get that on my phone because ultimately you kind of want to view this at the size uh, that it's going to be at. Uh, try changing the background. Yeah, maybe that's what it needs. Maybe the background needs some banding, you know? Um, yeah, you know, I think that's it. Maybe that's it. Gosh. So much for my other projects that I was gonna work on. Gradients. Right in here, a lot of these similar gradients. Let's just throw them at that guy. Oh, does that help? I don't know. Yes, no. Do an angle, double click on it. Guess what, we can now sort of adjust the angle. This is giving it like a lot of motion, which I'm kind of into. What do you think? I uh, it, I think it also needs to be thicker too. Well, the great thing is, is this is still that vector smart object. So I could jump out here, say, hey, you know what? For all this stuff, yeah, this stroke, take it back up to one. Take this stroke, the one that was behind it, take that up to like two. 
or 1.5. All right, there we go. We just made this thicker, we'll save it. We'll go back in here and we've made it thicker. So do you guys like this? I think it's looking better. Need some inverted 3D or some shadow or something. <laughs> Mike's like, can we get any more colors? Dude, I love I'm I like where this is headed. Because there's lots of motion with it. And uh the question is, can you still read it? Because really, you're dealing with type that has one job, it's to be legible, you know? Don't don't go too crazy with it. Right? You still gotta be able to read it. And typically what that means is you're gonna have to um, send it to a friend. <laughs> you need to step away for at least 20 minutes, right? Uh, to get it right. So, but again, I would try a number of things and if nothing's worth working, do the exact opposite of, uh, of, uh, what your, you know, intentions are to me, it's getting lost. Is this better? So again, the goal is like still read it as fantastic. Again, change this. Does it look better? I don't know. Okay. Anyways, I'm just having fun here, everyone. <clears throat> Let's do this. Let's go one more time into blur gallery. What do we have? We have a path blur. We could do a field blur. Uh, right up here, let's do a motion blur. And again, this could be a horrible idea because I'm full of them. I'm full of horrible ideas. Yeah, that's, I'm full of horrible ideas. Let's take this, filter, blur, gallery, path blur. All I have to do is follow that little line, and uh, it will blur it out. So, speed. All right, I'll work on that some more. You guys get the idea. Uh, excellent job. All right. Well, so this is often what happens. I say this a lot, but like you'll sometimes you'll throw everything at a design and then you got to learn like when to start editing and when to start simplifying. I'm like, okay, well, this blur isn't quite working. Turn that off. Does it need the drop shadow? Do I turn that off? And, uh, you know, is this at a good place? Do I turn off, you know, do I start editing this? and sort of just keeping the very best elements, the elements that it needs, right? So that's what I'm thinking about. Uh, just keeping the very best of this text uh, is the goal. So anyways, you guys get the idea. There's our lovely poster design or basically our type lockup. Um, and in traditional Paul fashion, if I got three minutes left, yeah, I'm gonna work on a new project. Think outside the box, why not? Bam, shava, 3D, <clears throat> extrude and bevel. Yeah, let's extrude it. Let's isometric left. Take that up to 80, right? There we are, boom. Isometric right, 80. Ooh, you could do this, you ready for this? Boom. You could make this look like, you could basically cut off the top, the front of it, um, and just have the, uh, and not have the caps. So anyways, uh, from here, hit I, let's see if that'll work. Nope, it does not. So let's take this. The cool thing is, is I could turn this into a graphic style. So I'm gonna make this a new graphic style since I don't have much time. Selecting this, here's my new style, bam. Taking this one, this one's also gonna be a graphic style. So now I have two graphic styles going two different directions and uh, I can just come in and pick the ones that I want and do something like that, okay? So overall, taking those, adjusting maybe the color and the color, right? We're well on our way, but I've done this before. Uh, there we go. All right, guys, uh, down on my last minute, you guys get the idea. And remember I said the huge issue with the text is, uh, you know, ha you know, having this be smooth curves, 
I'm not crazy about it. It needs to be these, have these like just bands of color. So go into extrude and bevel, go to more options, take this down to four or five or whatever works for you. And now we get this lovely, that's what I want. Come on now, right? I should have made that change earlier um, so I could apply it appropriately, right? Three, that's even better, right? You get the idea. Thanks so much for hanging out with me this fine Friday. Um, going on vacation starting next week. At, um, Thursday, I think, is when. So I'm not here on Friday. That's all. There you go. Think outside the box, people. That's the goal. Stick around. Terry White's up next. Awesome. Love, Terry. Happy 25-year anniversary or Adobeversary to Terry White. Really appreciate him and all the hard work he does. He's amazing. So... Anyways, you guys take care and uh, join me for my Photoshop masterclass coming up later as well. Thank you. I'm glad it was fun. Thank you so much, Bobby and Mona and Kellen and everyone. Appreciate you guys. We'll see you later.